I will have a case session. We talked about how mercy is now. Mercy is now. But today we're going to talk about how mercy relates to us in terms of Christ touching us with his mercy. Christ touching us with his mercy. I need to find first someone with a Bible. Anyone got a Bible with them? Yes, excellent. Can you get your Bible? What's your name? Antonio. Hello, Antonio. So grab your Bible. And I want you to turn it to Luke chapter 15. So the Gospel of St. Luke. He's in there somewhere towards the back. Chapter 15. Okay. You have to do it with everyone. So come on up then, Antonio. And I'm going to get you to read from from there to there. Okay. In fact, we don't need to read all of that. So that's not for me. So Jesus told me. So Luke chapter 15, if you've got it on your phone or anything like that. So Jesus told them this parable. Who among you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, will not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and seek out the lost until he finds it? And finding it, will he not joyfully carry it home on his shoulders? Then he will call his friends and neighbors together and say, Celebrate with me, for I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, just so, there will be more just in heaven over one repentant sinner and over ninety-nine upright who do not need to repent. What woman, if she has ten silver coins and loses one, will not light it up and sweep the house in a foreign church till she finds a lost one? And finding it, she will call her friends and neighbors and say, Celebrate with me, for I have found the silver coin I lost. I tell you, in the same way there is rejoicing among the angels of God over one repentant sinner. Thank you. We want to congratulate the family. Thank you. So I hope both of those parables of Jesus, the parables of Jesus are great things, just the stories that Jesus was able to tell uh, the people to, to help them to understand uh, the message that he wanted to give to, to people. So I hope you um, have a sense of just how lovely those stories can be. But I just want to talk to you a little bit about those stories. I don't know if I'm to I've got to keep my notes in front of me so I don't, I don't go off track. So, notice some of the language that we just heard. It was about searching, losing first, and searching, finding, of rejoicing. Of repentance. Those are the key words. So we, we have first the, the lost sheep, that one single sheep amongst the 99. The one single, that's I'm going to come back to that, that one single sheep that gets lost. And someone goes searching. Someone goes searching. We know it to be the shepherd. And then the coin, one coin among many coins, is lost. And again, someone goes searching the woman of the house. In both cases, something is lost. And someone goes searching to find that which is lost. And, as we heard in both parables, there's rejoicing when that one sheep or that one coin had been found. And the person who went searching invites others to join in the rejoicing. And as Jesus tells us in those stories, those parables, in both cases, that reminds us of someone who repents, who says sorry for what they have done wrong. Someone who is lost because of what we call sin, and someone has gone to find that person and bring them back and rejoice in their return. So that's sort of the 
sense of that, those two parables. We're going to hear in our mass today of the third, there's a third parable connected with those other two. And it follows on from those two. It's the story of the prodigal son. We all know that one very well. Um, so we'll hear that in our mass today. So I want to just indicate something about that. You know, in our, our world today, um, it, it's full of ideas. You know, it's ideas about how we, we can sort of sort out the problems of the world. Uh, many of you come from places where there's great violence. Um, yesterday I, I had a chance of talking with some French pilgrims. And as you know, in France at the moment particularly, there's, there's been some terrorist acts happening and the, the great tragedy associated with all of that. So there's, there's all sorts of things in our world about ideas of how to sort the world out. You know, someone, some politician puts up their hand and says, we're going to do this, this is how we should, should organise the world. And another politician puts up their hand and says, the complete opposite. So there's all sorts of ideas out there. And people sometimes say, ideas change the world. It's ideas that change the world. Well, I want to say no to that. I want to say to you that it's not ideas that change the world. It's actions that change the world. You can have as many ideas and ideologies. Ideologies are sort of um, ideas that are so firm and so fixed that nothing else can be seen. You have lots of ideas and ideologies. There's actions, behaviour, that makes the difference in the world. So, as an example, uh, who is from Britain again? Hello, Britain. Um, uh, one month ago, you had a referendum in your country. Now, I think most of us would know about that referendum. It was a decision to, to decide to stay a part of the European Union or to leave the European Union. Now, there was all sorts of ideas before the, elect the referendum, wasn't there? And that everyone thought you go stay with the European Union. But in fact, when the action, uh, the actual voting, when people went into the ballot box and ticked their Yes or no, it came out very differently to what everyone was expecting. True. So actions are what count, not ideas. In those two parables, we have action. We don't have a shepherd sitting around thinking, oh, I've lost one of my sheep, but I've still got 99, so that'll do you. We don't have that do in the parable. That's what it's not what Jesus said. We don't have Jesus saying in the parable, the, the woman in her house going, Oh, I've got you know 20 coins, I've lost one, I can live without it, don't worry about it, I'll go off and make use of my 19 coins instead. In both cases, we have action. We have someone who says, This one lost ship, this one lost coin matters. And I'm going to do something about it. Not just going to go, oh, that's a disappointment. Or, oh, no, not again. She's gone off. No. Let her find its own way back. No, it's action. The doing of something. And that's so important when it comes to our faith. That we need to be doers of the Word of God. So not just listeners, not just, I love that story, but it needs to be of <coughs> us, a commitment on our part, the doing, so we become doers of the Word of God. And the way that we might do that doing is in terms of mercy. So I want to tell you a little bit about how I understand that side of mercy. You're going to hear a lot about mercy, so this is just my little contribution. If it's helpful, great. If it's not, don't worry. Um, take what you can, and that's, that's a good thing. 
I don't have the answers. I'll tell you that now. I don't have the answers. God has the answers, of course. God has the answers. So mostly listen to him. So the first point I want to make in this regard, so we're getting that sense, firstly, action practice. We are doers of the Word of God. And the Word of God, as we've just heard, helps us to understand mercy as a doing thing, not as an idea. So we can have ideas about this. Oh, I would like to be merciful. You know, I think I'm merciful. That's ideas. But how do we do the merciful? How do we do it? The first thing I want to point out is that the individual matters. Someone matters. In the story, the coin and the sheep, who both represent the sinner, matters. In our world, often enough, is it true? That in, our, in all our cultures, we come from very vast different cultures, but, it, but this is common across the world. That we think that um, big numbers or, or big groups, the majority rules. Who's heard that expression? The majority rules. Yeah, yeah, of course you have. But when we live by that sort of idea, we forget about the individual. You know, the individual then has to fit in with everyone else. The individual has to simply be like everyone else. But God doesn't do it that way. God reckons each since every single one of you here in this room right now. Every single one of you. Look around you. I got to Look around. Check out yourselves. Turn your heads. How old are God reckons every single one of you matters. He personally is concerned for you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Every single one of you. And me too. God even has a concern for me. You sometimes wonder how God thinks. Why would you be concerned with the years? Lovely. <coughs> so it matters that Jesus taught us through his stories, his parables, to go out to the one lost one. And that's mercy, the going out. The ideas of mercy, you just think about mercy as, a, as, a, as an idea. But it becomes sort of self-focused. We start to think about mercy <coughs> about, well, what can I receive in terms of mercy? Who's been merciful to me? But the very first point about mercy is the going out, not the coming in. It's not about where to wake up the mercy. Show me the mercy rather than show me the money. You know that sort of phrase, show me the money. Yeah, yeah. Well, show me the mercy. <laughs> no, it's not that. How do we go out? Like the good shepherd, like the, um, the good house people, how do we go out looking to provide us, looking to give? <coughs> how do we, as my little song was trying to say to you, be mercy. So that's the, the first step around mercy. But it's not about us, it's not about me, it's about you, it's about the other person. So how can we, as Jesus did, be merciful? I want to just say that for a little bit on that. How can we be merciful? I want to say this. Who's got hands amongst us? <laughs> Who's got hands? Oh, your hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good, good, good. Who's got feet? Yeah, 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 yeah
most of us got a couple of things. Um, who's got eyes? Yeah. Who's got the wiggly bits on the side of your head? <laughs> who's got one of these, a mouth? Who's got a nose? What have I just named? Your five senses. That's right, your five senses. Um, I'm going to be very Australian at this moment. So, um, be, be prepared. Be prepared. Um, Australians can be a little bit sort of. We don't always say things in a proper way. We didn't learn from our British forebears um, too well. Learn more from the Irish. <laughs> So, there's a song that some of you might know, Our God Reigns. Mm -hmm. Our God Reigns, Our God Reigns, Our God Reigns. Mm -hmm. Who knows it? Yes. Yeah, good. I'm going to give you a new word. <coughs> Change one of those words. Our God Spits. <laughs> Our God Spits. Our God Spits. Our God spits because our God spat on the ground, made a paste with his spittle, rubbed it in the eyes of a blind person, and gave him sight. Our God Jesus spits. He spat on the ground and brought healing to that one individual. The individual who mattered at that moment. And Jesus, our God, made use of what he had to bring mercy and healing and the gift of God to that person. So he had his spittle and he had his hand, he could make some paste in the dust and he could use his hand to touch them those blind eyes of the man and to give him sight. Jesus did something. He didn't just say something. He did something. And he made use of his senses. He made use of all that he had to be able to bring the message of God, the message of God's mercy particularly, to those that he met, one by one. Jesus, as you know, didn't sort of make this, uh, he didn't wave his hand like a magician and go, all be healed, all be forgiven. No, Jesus didn't do that. He saw an individual, that one person that mattered. He said, what can I do for you? And how can I use all of me to bring something to you? So you've all got hands and feet. We've all got hands and feet. We've all got eyes and ears. We can all smell and taste, speak and so on. So it's not just what we say that matters, just as it wasn't just what Jesus said that matters. It's what we can do, who we can walk up to and say hello. Who we can reach out to and say, how are you? Who can we look upon and say, well, and who can we hear to learn of someone else's life? Even our smell and tasting can be sources of doing mercy. When we, we smell the, the, perhaps the, 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 the dirt or the, or the palm of sweat and, and unclean person. And that, that smell can prompt us to do something. We want to taste the meal of someone who has very little to offer, but to rejoice in that tasting with them. So all of that is doing mercy. Mercy is not just something that you talk about. 
not just a nice idea. Mercy is something that you can do for someone else. Mercy is something that you can do for someone else. And I want you to remember that you can do the doing in all sorts of different ways. Just as Jesus did it in all sorts of different ways. He spat on the ground. He touched people. He walked with them. He sat down and shared meals. He tasted the food that was offered to him. He smelled the, the death of Lazarus, his friend, and gave him new life. And most particularly, he gave up his own body on the cross for us. So he didn't say much on the cross, did he? A few words here and there. It's what he did with his body on the cross that matters. It's what he did with his body on the cross that matters. So that's kind of all I want to say to you today. I don't want to say too much. You get enough words. So no first that mercy is about doing not ideas. And mercy is about doing for someone else the individual matters. And mercy is about all of us, all of me, making use of all the gifts that God has given to me, all my body, to go out with mercy to others. So you don't have to have a great mind. We'll be able to speak really fancy. I'm from Australia, of course I can't speak fancy. Um, you don't need any of that. You have what you need already. God's given it to you. He's given it to you. You have what you need already. You've got your hands, you've got your feet, you've got your eyes, you've got your ears, you've got your nose, you've got your mouth, you've got your senses, you've got all of you. That's all Jesus asks. To give yourself and to give to others yourself in mercy. To give to others of yourself in mercy. Okay.